Welcome gamers to this week's episode of Last Call Gaming. We're on episode number 94. My name is Craig Prowse and joining me, as always, is Mandrew Montemayor. How are you, Andrew, on this 120 degree weather we're having? Dude, it's disgusting. I want to <laughs> die every time I go outside. Dude, it is brutally hot. Brutal. I was outside for two seconds. I'm already just like... <sighs> Yeah, I literally have been trying to, like, avoid anything. Getting gas, going to the store, doing anything. I, like, the other day, I went home because I was like, fuck, I don't want to go to the store to get food. I don't want to get out of my car. So I'll just go home, relax for a bit, and then when it's nighttime, I'll go out. I was like, okay, I'll just take a quick nap. I just ended up sleeping until the next day of work. Well, dude, 8 o'clock is fucking hot now. And, like, the sun's out still till like, 8 p.m. So, guys, we are dying out here. But one way to stay cool... This is with a little beer that uh, Andrew picked up today. I'm actually liking these. Yeah, this is, guys, because you know we like to drink beers and you can drink along with us, is the Voodoo Ranger Juicy Haze IPA with a 7.5% alcohol. And uh, it's categorized as an IPA New England, even though the top says New Belgium, so I don't know where the, I don't know where the mix-up was there. But it is uh, brewed in New Belgium Brewing Company, so I guess it can still be just labeled a New England beer, but it is quite tasty. I feel like I've kind of noticed a trend, and it's not on purpose either, that ever since someone called us out for not drinking IPAs, that's Dude. all we get every week now is IPAs. We've been on an uphill battle with uh, IPAs, and um, I'd say it, this one's good. This actually is really good. If this was like what you're going to at a bar to go get, I could see drinking three of these without getting like into any problems, but... I would definitely drink this by the pool. Don't we... Have we done Voodoo Ranger before? Is it him, isn't he the one where his we hat did, is almost changing? We did the Imperial IPA. Yeah, and the other one, he's almost wearing, like, the Russian, like, yeah. mamushka hat or whatever. <laughs> the mamushka hat. The, this is another one of those beers that they have, like, a bunch of different fucking styles of it. And so this one, again, it's a citrus and blah, blah, blah. I was like, all right, well, it's hot enough. Citrus it is. <laughs> citrus it is, and I gotta say, it's a well-done uh, pick. So, yeah, I think our IPA game has definitely stepped up, so... I don't think I'd drink this during the winter, though, because it's just, this is a summer vibe beer. <laughs> Excellent. So let's move on into, uh, uh, before we get into, you know, what we're up to, if you guys take a quick minute to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and always try to hit those notifications so you guys know when the next video pops up, uh, jump down in the comment section and leave a comment, and let's have a conversation. And if you guys are listening to the audio version only of the podcast, whether that's on iTunes or Spotify or CastBox, uh, if you can, do us a favor and leave us a nice review so we can help find a broader audience. Either that or recommend us a good or nasty beer. Either way, we'll definitely try we'll it. We'll keep it cruising. So guys, before we dive into what we're mainly going to talk about today, uh, we like to do What Are You Up To? Where we can kind of see what each other have been watching, what we've been playing. Uh, Andrew, would you like to go first or second? I'll go first. All right. What have you been up to? Um, actually, lately, as anyone who's known us, I'm a big fan of tattoos. So I've been binge watching Ink Master. Mm -hmm. I kind of didn't care about the show when it first came out, but I don't think I had like that many tattoos. So I was kind of just, I don't know. I wasn't really an art snob or anything <sighs> like that, and I kind of didn't get it. But now that I've just gotten whatever done, going back and watching this show, I, it's so interesting to me. Like, And I'll be critiquing it and stuff, mm -hmm. too. I started following a couple of the people on Instagram. Oh, nice. I really love... Uh, the judge Oliver, the dude with Oliver the, like, Peck, yeah, I think he's like badass. American traditionalist. Him and uh, Chris Nunez are really cool. So I've been binge watching that. Um, I'm decided now that I'm gonna dedicate my time as my next game because I've been kind of in a slump to beating Monster Hunter Iceborne because I kind of didn't finish that. And then uh, I've done a couple Call of Duty tournaments. I have a couple scheduled for tomorrow. I signed up for Z League. Anyone out there doesn't know, you can sign up for the Z League, and it uh, there's all kinds of there's paid tournaments you can enter there's free tournaments you can enter and it'll it gives you like payouts of like 150 bucks 300 bucks a hundred dollars the working man's <laughs> the working man's competition and you can do like duos quads trips there's all kinds of different things at different times so i've been doing that and um i know i said last weekend i was going to stream dark souls i actually didn't because with e3 we had someone else coming down i actually completely mismanaged my time and i didn't have time for anything so if that's something you want to see, I will for sure be doing that this weekend. So I had to re-download it, have it all prepped and set up. Nice. I can't wait to watch that. So uh, what I've been up to is watching, uh, coincidentally enough, as Ink Masters as well. Me and Andrew have been, like, texting about it. but Because uh, on Netflix, you can get the first two seasons. And I was like, dude, I need more. Like, I know there's more. So uh, Paramount Plus, you can actually get, I think it's ten seasons. And then they do another one called... Um, uh, Angels, and then they do another one called uh, Redemption or something like that. I've seen some of the other ones. It pops up on my YouTube feed. Yeah, now. so I actually got Paramount Plus, and it's a lot better than I thought Paramount Plus was going to be because I did start watching a few episodes of Legends of the Hidden Temple, and it's got like Ren and Stimpy and Guts and stuff like that. So 
Uh, the other thing was, I just finished MODOK that was on Hulu. Dude, and it's never one thing to say like, oh, you know, get to the episode, blah, 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 and it gets good. The first episodes are good, but the last five are fucking hilarious, dude. Like, I was literally dying watching this show, so I would say check that out. And uh, the next thing I think I'm going to start watching is, because um, I think they're on episode two, is Loki on Disney+. Plus. I heard it's good and it looks good. I've been hearing that it's been doing fantastic, so that's going to be the next thing I want to start. Uh, as far as playing... Uh, I started playing Final Fantasy IX. It's uh, you know one of those games nice. that I thought I remembered. I know I played it as a kid. I can't remember if I. I thought I beat it. I don't, but I can't remember anything about the game. It's been so long. You know, it's a PlayStation One game. So I went back and started doing that with all the you know the speed cheats and stuff like that. So I'm on disc two. I just got to that part. So I'm gonna keep playing that. Um, I started playing Destroy All Humans as like kind of just pass the time kind of game. This, if I remember right, this was like a 2000 like five game that came out. But I think it's THQ Nordic that does it. Where, and then they remade it. Yeah, and it's actually or remastered. It's, it's a lot, a lot of fun. Um, but I know in a couple of days on Monday, the twenty first is Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance comes out on the Game Pass, and I know me and Gino are gonna dive into that. It's a multiplayer game, so I'm playing Final Fantasy IX just to kind of you know play an RPG, destroy all humans, and just kind of pass the time. And then Monday, that's gonna be where I sink my time into the next big game that I'm looking forward to. So uh, that's all I got. Um, so let's move into. The main thing we want to talk about, guys, and that is that the E3 2021 has came and it has gone. It was a four-day run from Saturday to Tuesday, and there was a lot, a lot of things in there. Each day had about six different things you could watch. So Andrew and I aren't going to pick apart this whole thing. That's four days worth. You know, we're not going to try to shove that into 40 minutes or so. But what we do want to point out is two of the biggest things that pretty much what people are calling the winners, which was the Microsoft Bethesda Showcase and the Nintendo Showcase. And then after that, we're, we're going to pick out some highlights from some of the other events that we had. And as always, guys, if there's something we leave out or, or miss that you guys really liked, leave in the comments down below and we can talk about it. So the first main thing with the Microsoft was it was a 90-minute uh, presentation, the first time ever that Microsoft teams up with Bethesda. Tight to do 90 it. minutes, I felt. A tight, tight 90 minutes. And the first thing they start out, you know, the first bullet out of the chamber was Starfield. It's been, you know, a lot of people were questioning for a while, where is Starfield going to land? Is it going to be a game that's going to be cross-platform? Is it going to be exclusive? And when is it coming out? So they pretty much came out and said that it's going to be a Microsoft Xbox Day one exclusive, and they put a date on it as 11 11 uh, 22. So, let me read a real quick quote that Todd Howard said about being exclusive and not going over to PlayStation. Then, Andrew, I'll, uh, let me get your thoughts. So, one of the things he was asked, and this it comes out of Games Radar, um, it goes into saying, uh, You don't ever want to leave people out, right? But at the end of the day, your ability to focus and say, This is the game I want to make. These are the platforms I want to make them on. And being able to really lean in on those is going to make for a better product. Now, I feel that's kind of a, like a, I don't want to say a throwaway answer, because, but I do feel like him and Microsoft have been in bed for a while now. And I don't think he has any regrets. I think he knows that Microsoft is going to be putting Bethesda games out in the forefront on every other platform you know just because it's not on playstation anymore doesn't mean you're not going to get it on in a thousand other different ways so um andrew being the first big news that we saw how do you feel that starfield you know the questions and the rumors are done it's coming to microsoft day one ne end of next year i think that was kind of the first big punch especially because that shuts up all the people that were like oh well they bought this company for no reason it's just me match multi-platform anyways you can't have it only be on xbox and pc to make money it's for sure coming to PS4. The only thing I didn't like is that actually after E3, Pete Hines from Bethesda came out and put like an apology. I but then, that too. But, but then he reiterated like, I'm not sorry that we made this decision. I'm just sorry that you feel that way. But it's like, I've never seen any play uh, when like Spider-Man or... Right, when Insomniac got fucking bought up. Yeah, no, no one from over there was always like, sorry, sorry, sorry. Like, it's just business. And at the end of the day, it is what it is, so... And yeah, and they didn't really show too much gameplay. It was just a cinematic trailer but I mean, you know the more we get to see the better and we still have a year and a half so um it's, it's just kind of cool that that rumor and questioning is is done yeah um, now i'm tired of seeing those articles like is this game multi-plat is it not blah blah, <laughs> blah 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 uh the next big thing that everyone had a question on was i would say was halo and you know at the end of the day it didn't show a clear date i believe they're still just sticking at the end of the year holiday 2021 but, uh, i know andrew this was a big one for you showing off multiplayer and stuff what did you think 
I think so. What they did show off a little bit of the campaign, which I kind of liked. I like the new AI chick that they have in there. Oh yeah, I that's kind the of, new bay. I kind of wish what they would have done though is maybe showed like a comparison of like, okay, here's where we were at last year. This is what that year bought us. So that way, obviously, I could see it visually, but they didn't really show off any gameplay. It's just you know mostly like the in between cutscenes between whatever you're watching. But the multiplayer looks phenomenal. Great. I think with Halo, they kind of glossed over it a little bit though. I was just showing Craig that after the show, uh, the following day, they put out like a 12-minute thing, which I think they could have shaved down. And I think that's what they should have put in. Um, definitely check it out. It was trending number one on E3. Just type in Halo Infinite Multiplayer, and they break down like how the new systems work, how the maps work, how you can function like the AI in your head isn't just one static person saying like, oh, enemy over here or whatever. Like You can customize who it is you want to choose and stuff like that. A, they break down all the different new facets of what they brought to the multiplayer. And I think that 12-minute video that they did afterwards did more for me than the E3 presser. Yeah, because one of the things Andrew and I were saying was like, you know, don't bog us down with a lot of people talking about what they're going to be showing off. Just show it to us and let's let's keep it tight move on. But I got to say, yeah, if you're going to spend time, go watch that 12 minutes. They did because, it the right way, Because yeah. I didn't even know they were dropping guns and pods and stuff like that. So it's not just a respawn set. So there's all, if you're interested in Halo, which I know most of us are, it's it's probably the best piece of information you can watch regarding how Halo Infinite is going to be moving forward. Especially with like the Battle Pass, buy it, for, buy it once yeah, they, and they pick how you're going to... Yeah, they yeah. So that was actually really, really cool. And the next big game I kind of wanted to uh, talk about, it's, it's odd that they ended with it because you would have thought you know like especially games that were missing like fable maybe it would have been something like that but it was the new ip redfall which is from arcane austin and if arcane austin is obviously under the bethesda house and they're the guys that made prey and it's a four player co-op it's pretty much like a vampire shooter and you could definitely see you know uh left for dead and back for blood vibes out of this game so i just wanted to read real quick here um who the players are in this and then andrew you can talk to me if you liked it or not so this says up to four players can band together choosing a hero from a diverse roster says bethesda by diverse roster it means just four characters ex-military sharpshooter gone rogue jacob boyer redfall resident with telekinetic powers leo ellison navy combat specialist remy de la rosa with her robot sidekick and paranormal investigator and gadget master uh, devender krausley so yeah redfall is this place in massachusetts that's where the game's taking place it was just cinematic in scope, but I think it showed off enough to know how we can see where the gameplay is going to go. Uh, what were your initial thoughts? I thought it looked cool and interesting. I don't know if I would have ended with that. I'm a big fan of, if you're going to end with something, end with, I, I think they should have ended with Halo and had that gameplay and stuff like that going on versus a purely cinematic trailer. But from what they've shown, I get the idea of it and how it's supposed to be. I actually think it looks pretty interesting. Again, just not what I would have ended with. Yeah, I think it looks cool because, again, that style of gameplay, that Left for Dead, that Back for Blood is something like I've been craving and I want to get more into it. But I got to say, you know, what I think. And it's, to me, it looked, it was quirky and it was, you know, kind of these characters talking. It just looked kind of dumb. The characters, anyway. The game. I'm sure the gameplay and is gonna be fun and tight. But I just felt like I didn't. I didn't like anybody. Like out of those four people, none of those people I looked at was like, oh cool. He'll probably be the one I play. They all seem kind of flat to me. Even though and and do some of them get abilities and some of them don't or some because clearly what they were saying is it's all gonna rely on like science. They're using kind of mech to battle the you know the supernatural vampires and the vampires look cool because they're gonna be there's gonna be different variations of said vampires so i like that but i don't like when big things end with no gameplay i want to know yeah what i'm gonna be able to do and if you're just showing me you know a five minute cinematic and i don't automatically love what i'm seeing or or grasp any of these characters then to me i'm like it was okay, but it wasn't the strongest way to end, so that was kind of unfortunate. Although the game, I'm sure, is going to be good. I think that kind of sums up the conferences. They really kind of had, like, a lot to show. It's just a lot of it's either next year or there's kind of no gameplay and stuff for it. So, like, for me, I, I would have had to put this thing, if I had to give it a score, I would say about, like, an, a, an 8 or a 9 up there because there was a lot of good, consistent stuff, but not at any point was ever like wow like this is fucking good. like i there, there was no like wow wow factor just consistent like damn that's good that's good that's good that's good right but no like oh, holy fuck like that was yeah because the next big thing that we have to at least address is the game pass that was kind of what they were i don't want to say writing 
you know, holding on their shoulders to carry this thing. But oh, the, definitely the Game Pass. I mean, was disgusting. Almost every time you watch this thing, it was either going to be a Game Pass game day one, or it was going to be an Xbox exclusive. And this thing just surged. And this is why clearly we need to talk Microsoft about Microsoft the most is because they are doing uh, some big, big things with titles. So I'm just going to re uh, read really quick all the things that they dropped that are going to be uh, day one uh, Game Pass games, day one games that are coming in the future, and everything they dropped so far. Because one of the first things was Yakuza Like a Dragon. The fact that a game that just came out, what, the end of last year? December, is November, already, I think? It's already back on there. So here's a quick list of everything that's going to be on the Game Pass uh, this year. Let's... Oh, I, I was just gonna say, just on the Yakuza note, yeah. I think it's pretty amazing now for anyone who missed on it. You can play every single Yakuza or all on the game. Dude, pass. it's insane. One man. through seven. The only two you'd be missing are the um, I, I forget what it's called, like the Lost Souls or whatever. But those aren't technically within the. It's canon, but it's not within this set story of these people. So you can play front to back, which I've been doing. Yeah, and I really like that Game Pass is pushing these series. You're getting Final Fantasies on there. You're getting Yakuza's on there. I mean, so they're doing a great job of bringing uh, stuff back to the forefront. So here's everything that they showed off that is coming, is on there, or is going to be First one's huge so, already. Yeah, Yakuza Like a Dragon, Back for Blood, huge. Starfield, Contraband, Stalker 2, Somerville, Halo Infinite, Hades, huge, A Plague Tale yeah. Requiem, huge, Slime Rancher 2, Party Animals, Psychonauts 2, Shredders, Atomic Heart, Replace, Grounded, the Shroom and Doom update, which I cannot wait because now they're going to add achievements. Oh, yeah. yeah. I saw me and Gino were talking about that. I'm like, dude, I'm tired of seeing this game. If you don't have achievements, get the fuck out and of I, here. And it's like, hey, we got achievements. And I think it comes I'm like, all right, cool. I'm yeah. fucking in. Looks fantastic. Um, Ayudin, Chronicle Rising. Ayudin, if I'm saying it right, Chronicle, 100 Heroes, The Ascent, Age of Empires, The Outer Worlds 2, Microsoft Flight Simulator, Forza Horizon 5, Among Us, Dungeons & Dragons Dark Alliance, 12 Minutes, uh, Anna Crucis, Scorn, Aragami 2, Sable, Hello Neighbor 2, The Gunk, and Redfall. I mean, Jesus. The amount that they showed off is just clearly pulling in that way that Xbox is going, hey guys, we are going to take care of you. If you, I mean, this blows any any um, streaming service out of the water. Even if you like things like Disney Plus and all these things, like you can't say that Game Pass is not the Huge most for the biggest button threat um so before i get into what i want to say andrew that you, you see that huge huge list anything stand out i mean it, what do you want to say about it oh, there's tons of stuff that stands out on there like back back for blood i think that's absolutely a huge one because even so not just taking it as far as like okay like let's not just look at it as a microsoft fan but as a sony fan i don't have to spend 70 dollars. that's already racking up the bill right there that's 70 bucks right there day one that you have to spend on sony that you do not have to spend on xbox Someone came out after this and put like a list of, okay, here's all the third party games that are going to be on PlayStation as well too. And I think for like the year for Xbox, if you pay for just the Game Pass bare minimum, I think it came, or maybe it was a premium, came out to like 700 and something dollars. But if you were to buy each of those games individually over on the PlayStation side, it was like over a thousand bucks. Yeah, it's insane because um, I was having this conversation with someone and I was like, Dude, I am getting to the point, especially after seeing what I just saw, that I don't give a fuck about exclusives anymore. Sony can have their... And again, I don't want to sound fanboyish, but I just want to kind of clear the air of, like, I think we're done with the point of being like, oh, Sony gets God of War, Horizon, Uncharted, and Spider-Man. It's like, cool, and I want to play those four games more than anything I want to play on Game Pass, but I am now at the point where I'll take day one exclusives all day. No longer is Game Pass the dump of 100 games that we want people to kind of play. There's big titles on there. Back for Blood is one of the biggest Dude, games Hades, I want to play. which was like Hades in Game of the Year nomination. It's a game that's going to be on there. Psychonauts 2 is going to be on there. Grounded is going to be on there. I mean, Hades I, I, is I also on PS4 and you got to pay yeah, for it. Yeah, I don't give a shit about day, uh, exclusives anymore. You know, Sony can have their four games over two years. Dude, if, I'm, if you're going to give me day one, day one time, and, and again, these games aren't going to stay on there forever. But if I play Back right. for Blood for 90 days and go, dude, cool, I got to try it out. I got to play it for 90 days. I know I want to keep playing this game. Now I'll invest. Where if, you know, Sony wants to do it, you've got to buy it. And again, you've got Among Us. You've got uh, one of my favorite things that I saw that actually uh, lost my shit. And I want to make sure I say the right name for it was A Plague Tale Requiem. Once I saw they were making on that day one on Game Pass, I was like, dude, this is now the home for gaming, and again, not to sound fanboyish, I just think the tides are clearly turning, and this is going to be Microsoft's um, moving forward best year, and then 2022, they're going to wreck shop, so I mean... 
I really like some of those games. There was one in there, that Animal Kingdom one or whatever, that was almost like Super Smash Brothers, but with the weird stuffed yes. animals that are falling all over each Dude, other. Dude, there's a lot of that good stuff in fun. Here. Outer Worlds 2 coming. I mean, there's so that much That trailer goodness. was great, but after this came out, mm-hmm. all this stuff came out, my, uh, Sony just, or Sony, Microsoft published an article saying that their number one growing market right now actually is Japan, which they've always been losing in, and their number one selling product over there is the Xbox Series S, because people over there are just getting the Game Pass and just fucking butchering these games. Yeah, because there's no, and again, it's good to have that backing, and you know, no one else can do what they're doing in terms of putting funds and, and power behind it, but I mean, the fact that these things are coming day one changes my mind from wanting the exclusives to having day one available content. Like I'll take I'll take twenty day one games over three big titles over the next year and a half that Sony's gonna do. Even though I, I love these games way more, I'll take I'll take the 10, 20 that I'm gonna play as much. So I think Microsoft was in my mind the clear winner and the model that they're moving forward to is is something that is unparalleled. <laughs> And I don't know if anyone can even replicate it. So No, they uh, definitely showed off great. And they even had something else in their thing that was uh, amazing to me too, which was um, Battlefield. They showed off Battlefield, yes. which I, no one else had seen anything out there. And the gameplay on that looked absolutely amazing. I thought it looked like so much fun. They showed off all the crazy shit, saying that's like 64 and 64, so you have like 128 players. And it just looked like what I everyone knows on here that I've been hating on Battlefield since 5 came out. I did not like it. I oh, just talked about the old days. I that. <laughs> that now I'm super psyched on this, and I cannot wait for it to come in. And again, that's something that was showed at a Microsoft presser. Yeah, so um, great stuff from them. So let's move into the second best one, in my, in my opinion, was the Nintendo E3 Direct, which was at 39 minutes or so. And it, again, nice, tight. I mean, it moved from game to game to game to game. It showed off what I think it had to show off uh, more than what it had to do with other games. But the first big thing they, they came out with was that they're adding uh, Kazuha from Tekken to the Smash Brother roster. And it's just like, how many more guys can they add to this? Because... I was looking it up, and their roster's already over 70 characters. Great characters and, at that. And, and, yeah, every edition is is not like, even if you don't like the franchise, it's still a fun character. Because I yeah. think when they added, like, Splatoon people, and all, like, it's still cool characters. And at this rate, it's like, I don't know if they'll make another Smash Brothers anytime soon. Even if they get new hardware and they, they make a Switch, you know, pro, I don't know if there's any reason to make a new Smash Brothers because this thing is running strong. They're adding a new character, it seems like, every two months. Dude, I can't imagine what it's like to balance this game. Dude, it, it, exactly. Especially, or, and the look. I mean, you look at him versus, like, other people, and it's just like, they keep that tone from each franchise within their characters, and that's something that's, you know, impressive, that Nintendo is doing that. I think I saw it earlier, and it was pretty funny, is someone tweeted out, like, well, with the low bar that's E3, Nintendo would absolutely have to murder Captain Falcon in order for this to even look bad. And someone tweeted back at them. They're like, well, here you go. And it was like Kazuya when he's dropping Captain Falcon into the fucking volcano. I was like, that's so funny. Yeah, so um, I think that was super impressive that this franchise, probably at this point, maybe, I don't want to say the longest running, but probably the healthiest in terms of players um, of all time, man. Smash Brothers is insane. So the next one that I know everybody was freaking their shit about was the action adventure Metroid Dread Hi. that is um, which is cool they have an actual release date at the end of the year for October 8th 2021 um, I know this is set after the Metroid Fusion storyline but it's coming out before the Metroid 4 Prime which if everyone remembers that game got scrapped and is being rebuilt from the ground up so it's cool that they're putting in an official uh, Metroid game um, I really like the fact that it went kind of like that 2D side scroller with like kind of like the 3D atmosphere and to me I mean, it clearly looked a lot more kind of um, like hide and horror versus run and gun. How did you feel about it? Uh, yeah, no, it definitely... I, I loved Metroid Fusion. When they said this is a sequel to it and they kind of showed off like how it is and how it's running, you're running from that thing, that's how Metroid Fusion was. And I think that was a great Game Boy game that after I saw this, I was like, damn, like I'm for sure going to get this. Oh, yeah. My- it, it, it's one of those things that you know i don't have too much for my switch that i like to break it out but i definitely would for something like this the, the, even the art style at first when i was watching kind of the trailer i was like eh, this isn't blowing me away but then as soon as i saw like the gameplay i'm like damn this looks fast abrupt um and 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 kind of um intense when she has to roll over because what it, they were saying was 
there's these new enemies called Emmy, which is, they just, you know, acronym to E-M-M-I, which are supposed to be too strong for her to battle. So she has to go back into these kind of dodge and run tactics. And I'm like, well, that's cool. This isn't just, a, you know, a Master Chief barreling through enemies. It's it's tactics, you know I mean? You got to play the level and use the abilities to survive said level. And when you could do that with the character as popular as Samus and bring back a franchise to the forefront like, like Metroid, then it, I think it's a clear... Uh, clear winner, and it's going to be a definitely game that I'm looking forward to play in October. I still don't think that's going to sell crazy amounts because I think people overestimate the clout that Metroid has versus Samus Aran has herself. But either way, I'm hyped for the game. Exactly, it's one of these things that is Nintendo's. You know, everyone goes, oh, "Yeah, Metroid." Blah 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 blah. Then they no can, one buys it. They can rattle off six, but yeah, but when nobody you know goes to buy you know the franchise, then it, it, it kind of you know falters. And hopefully, this is kind of a resurgence for that. But uh, the next one that they got to saw, which I don't know. Everyone kind of lost their shit. I thought it was kind of eh. Was they showed off Breath of the Wild two stuff? It's like I don't need uh, I don't need more clips of nothing. I mean, they didn't really. I don't think showed off any gameplay. They kind of showed off that there's kind of maybe like a diving mechanic that's been added to it. And again, no official um, release date. Just a window of 2022. I, I, I mention it because it's. I know it's a hot Nintendo IP that people want Breath of the Wild two, but. If you're not going to show us anything, then why show us that little at all? I feel like it's almost it's like slightly more than what they showed last time. I think the only thing I see people going crazy about they're like, "Well, what favorite hair design is your link?" Because this link doesn't have like a ponytail; his hair is just like flush and like let out and stuff. So I was like, "Okay, cool." Like that's a big discussion about out of whatever. I was like, I watch that. I'm not hyped for it. I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll wait till I see more because if it's just Breath of the Wild two, then whatever. But if you're gonna <laughs> give me more like you know take breath of the wild and improve upon it maybe kind of flesh out the world add some more people like make it feel like it's really kind of this living breathing place that would be badass i would yeah. like that and of course we didn't get that so uh the next game i thought was actually really impressive that they're bringing back is uh warrior aware love uh, get Warrior. get it Aware. together release date september 10th that's a day one buy for me and the fact that they're adding uh like a co-op multiplayer to it looks fantastic i was always a big fan of it on on like uh, the Nintendo 3DS, and I believe it was just on the like I remember playing it on the SP. I had it on the GameCube. Dude, it's a it's a fun game, man. It's I remember, addicting. I, yeah, we used to get you know drunk, and it was a game you passed around the room to see how how many levels you could get through. And you know what? Kind of I don't want to say irritated me, but I've never gotten why because you can you can tell it's the same guy's voice. The guy that's talking in Wario, Wario has a voice. He can talk. They're, they're, why does Mario never be able to say anything? When, when it's the same guy doing the voice. So, because in the whole trailer, he's saying, like, I'm back, I'm doing this, and da-da-da. But, I don't know. That's definitely a big game that I'm looking forward to playing it. I like that it's coming out as quick as September. No, I was hyped for that, too, because I love Warrior War. I haven't really played one since GameCube, but that was one of my favorite games to play. Even my brother, who really only plays, like, Madden and Call of Duty and stuff like that, absolutely loves Warrior War. Yeah, and I think the last thing we at least have to touch on is the Mario Party Superstars that they had coming out, which is going to be... Five Nintendo 64 the Savior boards. of E3. The Savior with um, 100 popular mini games. Now, uh, me, Andrew, and, and a friend of ours, uh, Casey Court, who is a um, he does the podcast Heroes of the Storm, which is called Soak to 20. So, if you guys are interested in that, make sure you go check him out. But we got in this kind of conversation about like, should this game have been DLC to Super Mario Party, or is it does it warrant Absolutely. standing alone, being its own you know sixty dollar game with just remade maps and and remade mini games? And I, I gotta say, man, I don't know why they aren't pumping this game as you know pay for DLC in Super Mario Party, especially because they just announced they can do online. So why abandon something? Because all this is gonna do is is move the same player base from one over to this new one and it's not a new game it's like you were saying earlier and, and you can dive into it is it's just a remake of five maps that's the big thing for me i could have looked past like okay maybe it's an infrastructure thing you don't want to have to rework a whole game let's get everyone into this new one and then we'll just add on to there going forward like what they do with super smash brothers i could get with that that's fine but the fact that you're using only legacy maps and you can only do five it's not like you have to design the map how it works how it feels how it's got to be balanced or anything you don't have to do any of that shit and you can only do five maps i think at the least should have been eight to ten maps and that would have been a lot better but for five maps with just like some online games which obviously you're gonna be playing during whatever that should have been dlc tacked onto whatever like hey if you already own this even if you can't do that there you know like you can't he threw out a good idea like hey these characters don't work within this 
whatever this legacy game is, so you can only use whoever, 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 that would have been perfectly fine, and I would have been okay paying whatever for that. So the only thing I could hope for is that after they put this out, they're either going to add some free support right away, like, hey, this is just what we're launching with, and who knows, you know, we'll, we'll see what they say a little bit closer to launch. Hey, we're only starting with five, but you're guaranteed at least three more free ones once we kind of get it figured out and port them over. That would make it a little bit better. And then going forward, maybe a, a season pass or something. I, I don't know. But if you're only going to do legacy maps, you should have been able to do more than five. Yeah, and I guess one of the things I was kind of driving home when I was having, you know, when I was talking about the conversation was, like, this is, you know, so they're banning it. I mean, they're essentially leaving it behind to make a new one, and they're going to keep building off of that. They're going to, you know, keep adding more maps to the legacy maps because that's this what new ones the Smash Brothers Ultimate. Be. Yeah. But it's like, this isn't, you know, this isn't Anthem. This isn't an IP that, like, no one cares about. The fact that you're dividing and conquering, you know, the same people that are going to be playing the same games, I don't know why you wouldn't just keep the longevity of the, you know, of new Super Mario Party going instead of just going, okay, well, that one's done. Now let's do this one, and then let's keep building that one up. So... I'm sure the guys that are smarter than me are looking at this going, hey, this is the direction we had to go. But how hard would it have been to just add, you know, Mario Party flashback? And then it's just a section of the game that you get to play and play those old school maps and then keep all the people that bought that game, keep them happy and keep them contained because now I got to buy a new one of, you know, of, of maps that I actually have nostalgia with. And I think that's just, I hate looking at things as a money grab. But to me, that was just a complete money grab and probably one of my biggest disappointments of E3, so. And how would you have felt better about it if I provided my point that they added more maps to that? If you got like 8 to 10 maps, would that have made you if feel that better? Thing, if that thing, I don't even say 8 to 10 maps, if that thing was Mario Party 3 to 6, remastered and remade, then that's a game. The fact that anything is just 5 maps, that's DLC. Yeah. That's not a game. You're not giving me Mario Party 1. You're not giving me Mario Party 2 or 3 or 4 or 5. You're giving me 5 random maps from it with mini games. So it's like you're what you're selling as a game is not a game. It's literally by definition DLC. You're adding old ma it's like a Halo map coming back into the fold. It's like adding in um um like Zanzibar back into Halo anything. It's like you're not building anything new. You're adding old shit in with a with a res update and you know so to me it's like that's not a game. So that's why I got kind of upset and irritated about it. But mm -hmm. I know it's going to sell gangbusters because everyone's going to buy it. I talk shit about it, but I'm going to buy it. I, I have to. <laughs> of course I have to because no one's playing the old one. So now I have to play the new one. But uh, I don't know. I, I would say because we went on a while about just Microsoft and Nintendo. Is there anything else you want to talk about those two that um, maybe we missed or, or skipped over? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, really kind of everything else is like a little bit kind of meh. There's <laughs> a couple of shaky things. I mean, do you have anything in particular? No, I think we're done. So I think we need to move into kind of what the rest of the three days had, uh, you know, kind of going over what Ubisoft and Square Enix and them had. So uh, with Ubisoft uh, and Nintendo did it as well. They showed off the new Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope coming Instantly out in 2022. Of you when I saw yeah, I'm a big fan of that game. I thought it was a very uh, well done and kind of like a tactic RPG. The fact that they're coming out with number two. Uh, puts a smile on my heart, but the fact that kind of outside of what we talked about the rest of these games are all hype 2022 is kind of like ah, It kind of sucks. I didn't really care for that avatar game either Yeah, because that was another big thing was the avatar frontiers of Pandora uh, First person action game coming 2022. I thought it looked really well, but you know I mean, I know the movies are coming back out But it's like this is what Ubisoft is spending its time on Building this big ass avatar game for a movie that came out like 10, 15 years ago, so, however long ago. Uh, let us know what you guys think about what Ubisoft had or if there was anything more. Because I know uh, the next one was Square Enix and they did the Stranger of Paradise Final Fantasy Origin coming 2022, which was the confusing origin take of Final Fantasy 1 villain Garland and done by uh, 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 I always get Ninja Theory and Team Ninja, done by Team Ninja in this one, was it right? I think so. And, uh, I don't know, the game, I don't know, does it rub you as a Final Fantasy traditional or? It's weird. So they put they, they put out a demo for it for people to play. And I've been reading online that the combat and the way you play this game is absolutely amazing. And that it's how people wish future Final Fantasies might go. I've heard it's that good. Which, 
I'm excited about that. What I don't get, really, is it seems like it's super weird. Like, you have Garland, obviously, who's that traditional Final Fantasy-looking character. I'm a knight. I'm wearing armor. I'm, you know, I look like I belong in the medieval times versus a bunch of dude bros that look like they're from <laughs> Final Fantasy 15 wearing, you know, shorts and a shirt. They look like they'd be dressed like I am. Talking about fucking chaos for, like, 40 minutes. Like, chaos, 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 like, 80 times. I'm like, Jesus Christ. But... It, I, I just didn't understand where everything else was going as far as, like, I tell, like where the fuck is this taking... I, I didn't get it. This is a prequel to one. And again, one is that that medieval, there's castles, there's all this shit. What the fuck are these dude bros doing? Like, I didn't get it. Oh, wearing cotton t-shirts. But yeah, okay, so yeah, this is Team Things Ninja. even! <laughs> to be specific. But I gotta say, the the even the gameplay, because I, I like when... Uh, the gameplay look cool. can take liberties and be like, okay, let's make a game that's like Final Fantasy VII Remake. Let's make a game that's like FF10 and 12. Let's make, you know, traditional RPGs. The fact that this game kind of looks more like a Devil May Cry than it does like a like like FF7 remake. I dig. I liked it. But exactly what Andrew's saying, like the the overall look of it, aesthetic. It looks just off from thing to thing, but I'm sure when we get to play it, it's going to be, you know, cool, but I, I don't know. I, I think they may have missed the mark in terms of yeah, the aesthetics and the way it, it functioned as gameplay versus what we're normally used to. I think, let me put it this way, too, like, because we had talked about this the week before as being, like, and this game is coming to Xbox. We talked about the rumor that this was a PlayStation exclusive, which I, it's not now. When I pictured this game, I pictured, like, three knights dressed in full armor going against fucking Garland in his full armor. And instead, I got some guys who just walked out of, like, fucking Hollister fighting this guy. Well, because they almost look like they'd match more like Final Fantasy like 15's look or yeah. 16's look where you look at back in Final Fantasy 1, where's the monk? Where's the white mage? I mean, that's where you get this stuff. Yeah. That's where you get your roots from. The warrior, the white mage, the black mage, the the you know the monk, you know all that stuff. So it's like, where was that incorporated into this instead of just being kind of goth look, sword swinging people? And it's like, I get that you kind of want to keep the texture looking like FF15 or maybe a 16, but it's like, that's not what FF1 is now. So if someone were to play this one and then play number one, you're like, well, this looks extremely off. It definitely looks like a time travel based game. Like, all right, cool. We're going from like 2020, like it, me fighting fucking King Arthur tomorrow dressed as I am. <laughs> so uh, that was uh, one of the big ones. And I know that uh, everyone was talking about the Guardians of the Galaxy. Which I was, was super surprised by that. Well, I had no clue And of all it. the games, yeah, they put a uh, you know pretty quick date on it. October 26, 2021. Um, I would say this looks rough. I would say it looked very... I wrote that in all yeah. capitals. It rough. Did, oh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, it does look like this thing is still very, very rough in beta form, which is weird because they showed it off for a while. You know what I mean? That it was, was a good it chunk of like three That's minutes. the way you show off a game. <laughs> it wasn't three minutes of it. They were like, here's all of this. And I've got to say, it looks... It's a definitely a sidestep from what Marvel's Avengers just got done doing. They're moving away from like the pay to play kind of style that and they're doing a single player experience. I don't know if you use Guardians of the Galaxy as just playing one of five roster. You know, I get that you can kind of talk and move your party around, but like I don't know if I wanted to just play Star Lord the whole time, you know, who doesn't want to play uh, Rocket Raccoon or Groot or anything like that. So, as far as that goes, I'm curious because I'm sure once the game unfolds it makes sense, but um I don't know. I, I thought it looked a little undone, but I'm still looking forward to it. I could deal with it because mm -hmm. I thought it was fine just being Star-Lord because that's what keeps it cool. It's like, okay, you know, I may only be playing Star-Lord, but I look at it as like, okay, I've got these other dudes that are I'm talking to. They're keeping the story going versus I'm just fucking Tony Stark talking to my AI. I'm just Spider-Man talking to myself while I'm fucking quipping around, while I'm webbing around the city and stuff. <laughs> you know, I have a team that's like a family that's doing whatever. But yeah, the game did look rough. It looks like... It should have been a launch Xbox One PlayStation 4 game is what me and Gino are saying. Because we actually watched this thing together. We watched this one together too. I was like, ah, it looks rough, but it looks cool. It looks like they got really, though, the heart of Definitely. whatever Guardians of the Galaxy is. Because you actually have dialogue choices that change the game. And at one point, they're arguing over who it is they should have as like their fake hey, we caught this guy, now we're trying to turn him into you, and then he's going to break in on the inside, and he's our inside man doing whatever. And... Yeah, they're like, oh, well, let Groot explain himself. He's like, I am Groot. They're like, yeah, but I see your point, Groot. But what I, and I, <laughs> yeah. I, I think they nailed the aesthetic as far as it is. But hopefully, 
I'm hoping there's like an, a, a Series X or something patch because it looked like it, it was running rough. Yeah, and the last thing we at least got addressed was the Final Fantasy Pixel Remaster, which showed off Final Fantasy 1 through 6. And, and you can play it on the, on Steam and mobile. And it's like, why? Dude, I literally, my heart was jumping. I'm like, dude, because when they were going 1, 2, 3, 4, I'm like, dude, say 6, say 6. Awesome, 6. And then it's like coming to your phone and PC. It's like, well, these things have been on PC forever. You know, you can you can download and emulate and play them however you want. And coming to mobile, it's like, well, where's the love for the console people that like the people that actually want to play this game? I'm sure where's that at? I'm sure it'll come eventually. At least they didn't break your heart and you can buy it as a pack. Oh, <laughs> because yeah, these games were sold as individual pieces of uh, the collection. So if even though they're all coming to said platforms, they're you have to pay for each one individually, which I thought was kind of a real ball drop for Square Enix. But um. Outside that, I think those were kind of the highlights of them. I mean, was there anything from Capcom? Capcom was another big one. Oh, I hated it. Capcom was my worst one. They really let me down. <laughs> I'm not going to go into whatever they showed because I didn't... It, they spent like 40 minutes on Ace Attorney, a little bit on Monster Hunter. I guess I will go into what they showed. Um, RE-verse, if any of you are interested, is coming out in or is going to be playable in July now, but that should have already been playable when the game came out. But the thing that baffled me the most... Is like thanks to your guys' feedback and thanks to the positive support and we're glad to see everyone loving RE8 Village. We're starting work on DLC now. I'm like, who the fuck didn't <laughs> beta test this game that you haven't seen everyone's been in love with the aesthetic of this game since the very first fucking trailer mm -hmm. that you couldn't have something ready for October uh, fucking November as uh, something. So whatever DLC they're making, unless they're throwing their Series A team at it, isn't gonna be ready for like another year. And by then, a am I even gonna care? Yes. Depending <laughs> I, if, especially if it's Lady Dimitrescu DLC, I'll be all about it. Whatever they make, I'm talking shit. I'll be all about it. But the fact of the matter is, I'm talking shit about it now. Yeah, and there was a bunch of other things you guys could go watch. I mean, obviously there was like Take Two Interactive, there was Gearbox, WB had a whole big thing. I just thought kind of more of the highlights were the you know the Ubisoft These were the biggest ones. That we did. Yeah. So if you guys want to check it out again, it's four days worth of material. Go check it in the link in the description. We will have the Microsoft E3 and we will have the Nintendo E3 if you guys do want to check that out. So with all that being said, let's move into uh, riffing it up, 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 and uh, I'll lead off first with this thing because this is. A little weird. So the if you guys are into, um, I love this. Yeah, Batman and the new R-rated Harley Quinn show that is now um, used to be on DC Universe and is now on uh, HBO Max. There was a little controversy, and again, so I'm gonna just pause it right now for you guys. If you're watching this with a kid or anyone that's under the age of 18, this is kind of rated R conversation. It deals with stuff, so I'll give you a second to either pause or move on. Done. So this has to deal with um, the controversy that Batman doesn't eat out women, right? They said that there was, you know, superheroes do not do that. So uh, let me just read this quick article here that explains what it was. So uh, the defender of Gotham's sex life came under spotlight on Monday after Harley Quinn creator Justin Halpern told Variety that a moment where Batman was going down on Catwoman didn't make the third season of the DC Entertainment HBO Max adult animated series because of orders from uh, up high. And it goes on to say that they responded by saying that bat superheroes do not do that to uh, to ladies or however they respond, you know, exactly how they said it. And, you know, Harley Quinn, the TV show, if any of you guys haven't seen it, is fantastic. It's funny, but it's extremely R-rated. So the fact that that's a joke or, or something that they left out of season three is is odd but the the best thing was that Zack Snyder who's the director of you know the Justice League movies and and uh, Man of Steel and things like that let out this big ass uh Twitter post of Batman you know literally going down on Catwoman and all he put on it was canon so he just kind of shot themselves in the foot when they're like oh you know we've never done that they'll never do that it's not a thing and he kind of did it. And the only reason I'm bringing it up, because outside of video games, we do like to talk about cartoon shows and, and comic books and anything kind of related to that. And I thought it was a really interesting controversy because, you know, if it was a Harley Quinn conversation with Poison Ivy, that never would have brought up, you know. And if you're going to say that Batman won't do it just because he's a superhero versus a Harley Quinn who's an antihero, I thought it was just interesting. And I, I didn't know if this was maybe too much to talk about on our show, but I think it's an interesting um, point that, you know, it's already been in the comics. 
It's already something that's been established, and the fact that they're going to try to retcon it in a R-rated cartoon to me is just funny. I think I have two things. Two things I want to bring up about it. One is, um, you know that meme where, like, there's, like, a cat at the end of the table and the, the girl's crying going like that or whatever? Uh-huh. Yeah. Someone, oh, is <laughs> yeah, someone put one where it's, like, bat, or Catwoman on the end, and then it's um, Robin holding Batman back, and it's, like, heroes don't do that, and Catwoman's sitting there like that at the end of the table. But second, the thing that just occur- I actually just occurred to me at the second, too, is when I'm sitting here, is didn't we just watch Batman fuck Batgirl in... Under, underage in uh, uh, The Killing Joke? I mean, she's probably... In the remake, oh, of, the remake of The Killing Joke, Batman has borderline underage 18. Batgirl, yes. But... And she full blown like is on top of him, pulls off her top, even though you don't see it, but you see like the round side, whatever. And I'm just like, okay, so like that's okay. Not to mention the fact that after that he just totally fucking ghosts her, and that's I didn't okay. even think about that. That's and, pretty, uh... and that's okay, but that is not. So that completely blows my I, again. That just popped in my head right now because I was like, I don't really get it, but especially because that cartoon is like super hardcore. With, like, what Poison Ivy... They imply all the time, like, Poison Ivy and Harley Quinn, like, are, like, doing whatever because they're, you know, in their relationship. Yeah, they have sex several times in the show. Yeah, so it's, like, that's okay, but that is not... I, I don't really get it's it. It's just not that it's not okay. It's just the fact that they... And this is what gets people kind of either mad or upset. It's just they're saying superheroes don't do that. And, and everyone's just like, well, what the fuck does that mean? Like, selfless, selfish lovers? Like, that, you know, it was just kind of a weird thing to bring up with kind of, like, this... uh um, controversy around it, so I thought it was interesting to bring to your guys' attention. Leave in your comments down below what you think. So, Andrew, what's on your riff for today? My riff is actually going to be that um, a while ago the Xbox Design Lab closed to where you couldn't make any more custom controls. I know a lot of people love making those. You could have them engraved. Whatever colors you want them to be, there are some people trying to make the ugliest fucking controller they possibly can. That actually has now opened back up, so for anyone out there looking for something like that, you can definitely get out there now and put something up, and I was just talking to Craig about it, we're going to try to maybe come up with some sort of like Last Call themed control or something like that, maybe get it engraved or something like that. I want that, I want that, that maybe the next giveaway. Let me say something like that like four more times, because that seems to be my go-to whenever I'm describing something. Last Call Gaming Giveaway. Last call so, gaming something giveaway. like that. Yeah, a little something like that. So... Um, I don't know. We're at 60 minutes. Should I keep questions? It's up to you. Let's go. All right, we're going long. We're going long because I don't want to keep avoiding questions of the week. Yeah, so let's move into questions of the week. So uh, the first question comes from John Tavitz, and he writes, Far Cry 6 looks really good. Yes, uh, it Torpedo does. Torpedo Con sounds legit, but when I went to the website and it was a mess. So again, yes. this, this question is about two weeks old. Uh, Far Cry 6 was the last time we talked about. Torpedo Con is an event Andrew and I are going to uh, next month in July, and it's going to be awesome. So I just checked their website today, and it still is a mess. It's a mess. So the question is, is there any gaming studio that is no longer with us that you wish was back? I liked Lionhead Studios with the Fable series, but also was a fan of black and white. Dude, you had to have been a fan of Lionhead from the beginning then if you're a fan of black and white. Because, like, nobody talks about black and white unless you were a fan of black and white. So kudos to you, my man. But Lionhead Studios was a a really, really good one. I wanted to uh, just point out two that I think a lot of people miss. One was Midway. Which did um, Mortal Kombat? Mortal Kombat, and they did a lot of old arcade games. So it sucks that Midway's gone. And never I loved Midway. And never soft. It did Tony Hawk Pro Skater. I'm surprised that's gone. But mine was uh, Zipper Interactive. I don't know too much else of what they did outside of SOCOM US Navy SEALs. But that was one of the best games I ever played, and it was one of the more more integral studios that made the peripheral of the online multi adapter for PS2. Like functional, like everyone bought that to play SOCOM online with the headset on with the multiplayer, and it sucks that that disappeared because I know SOCOM kind of got blindsided on one of their releases. I forget what came out and blocked it, but like I think when much, it came out, it actually was them. during the PS3 outage, and so that, you could yeah, play yeah. online. That so that was, game, that was yeah, it game. bombed. So Zipper Interactive was one because I wish SOCOM US Interactive or Navy was still around, but I, if I'm not mistaken, I believe someone else has picked up the ownership of that IP. So. We should be seeing one hopefully soon. You know, when you said Midway, I really thought you were going to say Acclaim after that with like oh, Turok and the fucking Iguana. No, that's not where I'm going, oh, but I thought that's Acclaim would have been going. a good one. Are they gone? Is Acclaim gone? I think so. I'm, I'm looking pretty it up sure. while, you're, while you're doing that. But my go-to is Visceral. Unfortunately, EA shut them down. I loved Visceral because I loved Dead Space. Dead Space 1 and 2 were absolutely amazing. 
3 kind of fell by the side because it fell to that pressure of like, all right, let's try to make it like Call of Duty. Let's try to appeal to whatever instead of doubling down on the horror and like what we have as a fucking studio. Uh, fortunately, now we have like a spiritual successor coming out. But again, I loved this role and I hope every day for a Dead Space 1, 2, and 3 remaster, remaster, something so I could replay those, we get the achievements because I love those games. They're great. Yeah, I claimed Defunct in uh, 2004. So they're gone as well. So. Hey, here's to you. Hey, here's to you, Acclaim. So guys, jump down below if you have a studio that's missing that you wish was back. And final question comes from uh, Daniel Backstrom. And he writes... Uh, what is your favorite favorite Marvel superhero, favorite Marvel villain, and then your favorite Marvel superhero actor and favorite Marvel villain actor? So, as a kid, my, my default answer is always Spider-Man. Like, that was, I mean, when I was a kid reading comic books, I mean, as, as cliche and every man answer it is now, it was Batman and Spider-Man. But I remember reading them when I was six, seven, eight, and stuff like that. So, that's always going to be my answers. Villain-wise, comic book reading was always kind of tough because there was a lot of good ones but i always loved dr doom dr doom wasn't he was one of the few villains um that wasn't just a fantastic four villain he's fighting everybody yeah he'd battle uh dr strange for sorcerer supreme you know he'd be battling x-men at times or even the bad guys like magneto and stuff like that and i liked him because he always had like uh diplomatic immunity so like that was his escape if you beat him and arrested him he just got to go back to uh uh latvia or whatever the fuck it was called and Ireland. Yeah, and, and run it. So that was my favorite. As far as actor and villain goes, um, Tom Holland is still one of my favorite interpretations He's cool. of Spider-Man. Because um, obviously you could say like, you know, uh, Robert Downey Jr. for Iron Man and things like that. But I really like what Tom Holland's doing, so I'm really looking forward to uh, No Way Home. And my favorite Marvel villain is uh, Liev Shriver as I Sabretooth. I love. Watch Wolverine Origins for all its flaws, which I think has little and many think it the has a lot. The best incarnation of Sabretooth. Dude, the absolute best version of being able to command a scene, deliver dialogue, and deliver action. So that would be my answer. Mine, actually, so for... Latveria. I think I said Latvia. Latveria. If we're going, like, comic-based-wise, actually, mine is based on the comic at all. Mine is based on Marvel versus Capcom 2, because that's kind of when I really started getting into, like, the whole hero scene. And the final villain in that was Onslaught. Well, Onslaught is in the comics, though. Yeah, I know he's in the comics, mm -hmm. but that's just how I got into it. Oh, your, I, your interpretation of him? Got you, got you. Yeah, like, I, I love the way he's made. I love who he is. I love Onslaught as a character. I think Onslaught is fucking badass. And how intimidating he was in the game, and then finding out, again, that he's in these comics and doing whatever. So that was kind of my big introduction to him and kind of really superheroes as a whole. I think that was, again, as a kid, I'd seen, like, Batman and stuff, but I didn't really engage with me, I think, until that. My favorite hero always as a kid was Gambit. I think it's just oh, you know watching. I, I almost, in my head, I was almost going to write it down. I'm like, I bet Andrew picks Gambit. <laughs> it, it's just from that X-Men, the animated series, uh -huh. dude, just how fucking cool he is, his outfit, the way he is, with his staff and his fucking cards. And stuff. They made him over-the-top 90s yeah. cool. So as far as live action goes... My favorite villain, I actually almost put Jake G because I really loved Mysterio? him as Mysterio. I thought he was absolutely amazing, badass. I didn't even care that, like, he, spoilers, that he dies at the end of that movie because it kind of really set up everything else for this universe. But I would have to go Willem Dafoe as the Green Goblin. Oh. I absolutely love. You are who we choose to be. Yeah, I <laughs> choose. I love Willem Dafoe as Green Goblin. But as far as my heroes go, if it's not Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. And I'm not talking X1, but it would be X2 and beyond when he actually gets yoked and into the character. I would actually have to He's go... He's a future pass. Benedict... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to go Benedict Cumberbatch as Doctor Strange. I didn't really care for Doctor Strange going into it. I didn't really know who he was. And when I saw this movie, it totally changed my outlook. It's one of those things... Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy was it before me, but that's kind of really a team. Him, I was... I had no interest. But I was like, "Fuck it, whatever. We'll go see it. It's a Marvel movie. I haven't fucked up." It's one of my <laughs> favorite Marvel movies. I Excellent. absolutely love Doctor Strange. So, anyone that watches the video and makes it this far, because this is probably one of our longest videos in a while, I want to hear everyone's answer to this question. Uh, you know, your Genos, your CNs, your Dantes. I'm talking to you guys. I want to know your answer to that because that is a really great question. Uh, thank you, Daniel. So, guys, uh, that is the end of this episode. It was big, but I think we had a lot to talk about. Uh, leave everything you have to say about E3 down below because again we can only cover so much in the hour or so that we have so with all that being said guys my name is craig Perales, and that handsome fellow is mandrew montemayor and until next time cheers who do you voodoo
Dude, that mullet is getting wild, my friend. I know. It's so hot outside. Half the time, I kind of want to shave it off because it does get, like, pretty wet sometimes. How long do you think you did actually grow that thing? Dude, I think I've been growing this for... Since, like, the end of, like, last year. Has it been that long? Yeah, I remember <laughs> that it was... I actually had it for, like, a bit. And then um, the person who cuts my hair couldn't cut my hair because she was, like, having um, issues. So I had someone else go cut it. And I told them, like, I was like, yeah, just do, like, the sides and whatever. Don't, like, don't touch the back. I don't, I'm growing that out. And she just fucking shaved up the back. Anyway, so I just started over from square one. Ooh. Actually, this might even just be from start of the year. It's really kind of only come into its prime over, like, the past, like, two months. Well, though. it's funny because every time you come over here, I just watch it get, like, bigger and longer and beefier. And, uh, you know, what I wouldn't, you know, kill for those locks. Yeah, every now and then, like, I'll catch myself in the mirror. Like, I just see, like, these two strands, like, coming around the side or whatever. <laughs> and I just, I don't know, I forget about it most of the time until, like, it... Dude, until like, hot so, summer days like this. Dude, you're telling me, bro. 